Linux Mint 19.3 is coming soon. The development team has already released a beta this week for 19.3 and I'm really excited. I wanted to check it out. And in this video, I'm going to give you guys my first impressions of the Cinnamon edition of this release. And then when it does go final, I will give you guys a full review. But for right now, I just thought I would make a quick video and give you guys my first impressions of the beta. So let's go ahead and check it out. And here it is. I am on my System76 Lemur laptop, and I've already gone ahead and created a bootable flash drive with the ISO image, and I am running in live mode. This footage is being recorded straight from the laptop's HDMI port. I am not using a virtual machine, and we're going to check it out on real hardware. Now, first of all, I need to go ahead and install this. Again, I'm running in live mode, so I'm going to go ahead and check out the installer right now. I highly doubt that the installer has changed since this is a point release, but here it is. Let's go ahead and go through it. So selecting the language, keyboard layout, I'm just going to keep the defaults here. I'll go ahead and enable this, why not? Now in my case, I was checking out Windows on this laptop ahead of another video that I am working on. But I'm going to go ahead and erase the disk and install Linux Mint. I don't have anything important on this machine. It is just a test machine after all. And I'll go ahead and install. So nothing new here, just choosing my location. I'll put in my user info. I'll just keep it simple. Then my password. Continue. And here we go, we're installing. All right, so the installation is done, so I'll go ahead and restart. And enter. Here goes nothing. So here I am at the login screen, so we have a successful installation. So the installation process was reasonable. It felt a little slow to me, but it could be because this is an older laptop. It might be because I'm a little impatient today, but it wasn't unreasonable. I think that it is totally fine. Now one thing I definitely did notice is that when it restarted, it restarted quickly. The boot process was very fast. In fact, you didn't even see the splash screen in the video because the screen recorder didn't even have enough time to adjust to start capturing it before it was already off the screen. So the boot process was definitely pretty quick. But anyway, I'll go ahead and log in. Let's check it out. All right, so here I am. I have logged in and with this fresh installation, the first thing you see is this welcome screen right here. It says welcome to Linux Mint. So I'm going to take a quick click through this welcome screen. And here on first steps, we have the usual suspects. For example, system snapshots, driver manager, update manager. Those are definitely three things you really do want to check out in the case of a final installation. And I will go over these in the full review, but you especially will want to check out Driver Manager because if you have, you know, a gaming card, for example, you definitely want to make sure you have the right driver for your graphics card. And in my case, it says no proprietary drivers are in use. I pretty much expected that. I don't really have anything fancy on this machine, so that doesn't really apply to me. But that is something I recommend you do in all new installations. And Update Manager, that's important too, so I'll go ahead and launch that. And of course we do have some updates. It has been a day, and I guess they're hard at work here, so I'll go ahead and install these updates.
Now the updates are just about done and I like how the progress bar is shown over the taskbar icon on the bottom of the screen there. That's not a new thing, but it's basically things like that that I think go the extra mile for creating a better user experience. I think that's pretty cool. Right, so that was the update manager. I mean, nothing terribly new there that I can see at first glance. It works just fine. I'll go ahead and close it. And continuing here, a section for getting help if you need it. And last but not least, we have a section for contributing back to the project, which is always a great thing to do if you find Linux Mint helpful. You don't have to be a developer. There are other ways that you can give back. So definitely check that out if you enjoy Linux Mint. But enough of that, I'll go ahead and close out of this. Now at first glance, you know, we have a brand new wallpaper right here. And my first impression of that is I really don't like it. It looks like a plain black wallpaper. If you look close enough, you kind of see wireframe but it's so dark that it actually looks like it's completely black, which looks a little bit too generic to me. But, you know, it is very easy to change the wallpaper. You just right click the desktop here and click change desktop background. And we have all kinds of examples here. So I can click on Trisha, for example, and we can change the wallpaper to something that is a little bit better than the default. So this one is pretty cool, for example, so I can just keep it on this one. And I noticed some icons here on the bottom. So of course we have the Bluetooth menu, no surprises there. If you have any Bluetooth devices, this is basically how you can get those paired to your machine. An update notifier, which I already used to install the updates. And then this is a new feature right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. That was a little exclamation mark there on the system tray. Now this comes up when you install Linux Mint or if it detects anything that needs your attention, if it detects any problems that it feels that it needs to notify you about. So first of all, it's telling me that I need to install language packs and it's actually recommending that I install the hyphenation package. Now I will tell you if you write books, which I have done in LibreOffice, you really should install that. So I'll go ahead and do it. went ahead and got that done and it wants me to set the root password. So that's interesting. I don't remember ever seeing a prompt in Linux Mint before that recommended that I set a root password. And I agree and disagree at the same time. By default, the root password is locked and you can't use it. So you can't use the root account by simply logging in. And that's not a bad thing. That's how a lot of distributions do it. Now what they're saying is the boot menu is not fully protected unless you do set a root password. And I agree and disagree with that because it's not a bad thing to protect your boot menu, but the thing is, I mean, if somebody has physical access to your hardware, then they could do whatever they want. I mean, they can get a hammer and smash it to pieces. So the very fact that somebody has physical access to your machine is a huge problem and security goes out the window automatically if the attacker is able to put their fingers on your keyboard. So I don't really feel like it's a big deal to protect this. But if that is something you're concerned about or you think that there could be some, you know, malicious actor local that could do something like that, I guess it doesn't hurt to set the root password. So it's up to you if that's something that's important to you. I'm going to disregard that. And I pretty much figured this would happen. It's basically recommending that we set up time shift. I'm not going to set it up, but essentially what that allows you to do is have system restore functionality where it takes snapshots. So you can roll your system back to an earlier snapshot if you run into a problem. But since this is a beta, I really don't care if this installation breaks. In fact, it very well could because it's not a final release and who knows what kind of bugs I might run into. But that's not something I'm going to set up right now, but that definitely is something you would want to explore if this was a you know, final installation that was going to be used in production. Now also here we have system information. 
which I have to admit looks kind of generic. I mean, the GNOME system information that's in GNOME settings looks a lot better than this, but to be fair, this also has more information in it than that. So if you're at all curious like what my test system looks like and what kind of hardware I have here, well, here you go. It basically gives you all of that information. And then we also have crash reports. There are no crash reports yet, but again, this is beta. Just give it a minute, maybe that might happen. But so far, it seems pretty stable actually. So I'll go ahead and close this. And then I notice there's a printer icon here. So did it set up my printer? Well, let's find out. And it actually does show it on the menu there. And sure enough, there is my printer. I, that, I do have a brother printer, which has been a pain to set up. So I'm glad to see that it's set up automatically. Pop OS does that as well. I haven't had a chance to find out how they automate it. I do know that before there was automation for brother printers or specifically my model, it was a challenge to set up and very frustrating. So I'm glad that I don't have to go through all of that again. So overall, the look and feel seems pretty similar to past releases. Nothing really stands out to me as far as any changes here. Now it's possible that they've made gradual changes to refine the look and feel, but I do actually like the color scheme. I'm a bit biased because green is my favorite color, but it does look professional. And even though GNOME is my preferred desktop environment, I have to admit the user experience, at least when it comes to theming in Linux Mint, is actually better than vanilla GNOME with no changes. Speaking of themes, you can go here to settings. As always, this is not new, but basically just to show you if you haven't already seen it, we can go to themes and we can change each individual component of the look and feel. So I can go for more of a dark theme for the window border up here. That's great. Controls, I can basically do the same thing. I'll just go to the dark theme, which is right here. So now you can see I have a dark theme, which is awesome. And if green wasn't my favorite color, I could actually change the highlights. So what I could do is do a dark theme, but with blue highlight. And then I can do the same thing with the folders here. So I'll choose a different color. I'll just choose blue. And you can see that the color scheme has changed in pretty much every category. Now, this is really something that I wish GNOME would allow you to do by default because having control of each theme component right down to the color scheme that's actually really cool. So you don't have to suffer with it if the distribution's choice of colors don't appeal to you. You could basically make it whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. We can also change the desktop theme as well. So if I click on this, I can go back to a standard cinnamon look and feel, which changes the colors here, the bar on the bottom, and also the application menu right here. I'm gonna go ahead and change that back. So anyway, I do appreciate having a lot of control over the look and feel of the environment. That's awesome. Now, a couple of changes to mention here really quick. I don't have a high DPI screen on this laptop. It's just 1080p. But my understanding is that they have made improvements to high DPI support. So if you have one of those fancy high resolution screens, then maybe you'll have a better experience. Let me know in the comments below if you have a chance to test this and you do have such a display. That's actually pretty cool, a step in the right direction. Also, I noticed on the release notes, it mentioned that GIMP is missing. So if I go to graphics, you can see that GIMP is not actually present here. They did replace it with drawing. So I'll go ahead and open that. And I've never used this before, so I don't really have an opinion. I am a GIMP user. I know some people get fixated on defaults for some reason. I remember when Ubuntu, quite a while back, stopped shipping GIMP in the default installation media. People were really upset, but to be honest, it's super easy to install GIMP if that's what you want. So I don't really get overly concerned about default software choices. If anything, one complaint that I do have with Linux Mint is that I do have all these applications, which I think it's great to have a selection of applications by default. But what if you don't want all of these? What if you don't want drawing or simple scan? I mean, those are great applications, don't get me wrong. 
but I would have preferred to have an option to choose no applications because maybe I want to choose my own rather than have them installed for me and then have to remove the things that I don't want to use. But that's just a personal complaint. I don't really get too fixated on default, so it doesn't really matter all that much anyway. Now one thing that's really interesting to me is here in sound and video we have celluloid as the default video player and I've never even heard of this before so maybe I'll check this out and give you guys my opinion and I believe it's based on MPV which is what I use. I use GNOME MPV and that works fine for me. But what I find interesting is that this replaces X-Player and X-Player is a Linux Mint developed video player, so they actually chose against their own offering, which is very interesting. Now, for those of you that don't already know, XApps refer to the default suite of applications that Linux Mint ships with their releases and have been shipping for at least a couple of major versions now. And the suite includes things like a text editor, a picture viewer, and until just recently, a video player as well. Now, in my opinion, I do think that it's kind of a bad thing that they are creating their own suite of applications because while I do think it's a good thing that they're creating applications that will integrate better with their environment, I do think that there's a potential that it'll create more fragmentation and spread their developers a bit too thin. And let's be honest, we have a great suite of applications available in Linux already. We have great text editors and picture viewers. And I don't know how to take it that they are moving away from their own X player to celluloid. Now it might not mean anything at all. It does seem like a better choice, but you know, it is telling that they're moving away from their own X player to something else entirely. So I wonder if that has anything to do with the future of X apps in Linux Mint 19 and beyond, but I guess we'll see. Now another change in this release is the inclusion of GNOTE as the default application for taking notes. And this actually replaces Tomboy as the default for this use case. Now I don't actually have any opinion on this because it's not something that I've ever used before. I basically take all of my notes in Vim on the command line so you know I'm a little bit old school. But in the release notes they mentioned that GNOTE will have a more modern experience for Linux Mint users so that could very well be a very good thing to have this included by default. So I see on the screen it says start here, so why not? I'll just click on that. And it looks like I have a sample note. So I mean, this looks interesting and it looks like it's something that could be useful. But again, I don't really have an opinion on this, but maybe you guys will find this to be a useful addition to the default application suite. And uh, you know, let me know what you think. So far, it appears that this is shaping up to be a very solid release. Now, I don't see any major changes to speak of, but there's certainly a bunch of smaller changes that will no doubt make the overall user experience greater. Now, even though this is a beta, I haven't run into any problems, but then again, um, that's why this is a first impressions video and not a review because I haven't really had a lot of time to spend on this release, but you can definitely expect a full review of Linux Mint 19.3 when it goes final. So stay tuned to my channel. I will have that review for you guys very soon. Until then, what are your thoughts and opinions on Linux Mint? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.